Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dev from Vision Uranium. How are you today, Dev? I'm good, given the situation. <laughs> well, yes, and speaking of the situation, since the isolation lockdown occurred, your stock has tripled. Has tripled. Now, let's just start there. Why is your stock tripled? Well, I think I think it was oversold, and but suddenly the the big issue is that the spot price has shot up, and the reason the spot price has shot up is that for too long. Utilities have been counting on the short-term market for their supply of uranium, and suddenly, uh, with closures at Cigar Lake um, in, in Africa, and um, we'll see. I, we might see more. Suddenly, the supply—54% of the world's supply—disappeared overnight, and suddenly, uh, these utilities who have been counting on the spot market, and that's the big difference. Fukushima didn't drop the demand for uranium; it changed the way contracting is done. Instead of having long-term uh, plans in place, too many utilities live off the spot price. I think by 2018, 50% of, the, of their supply came from short-term, whereas in the past, when I got in the business, 15%. So they rely on that spot plus. Boom, it was gone. And you know everybody has done well. Like I said, chemical went from 8 to 16. Everybody's trading higher pre-COVID because of the spot price. And that's what is crucial here is the spot price. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it probably helps a lot of us as investors like the fact that you have cash and your announcement that you had closed a U.S. $10 million uh, credit facility with Sprott undoubtedly ha uh, helped. Do you want to comment on that? Well, we're very excited to have Sprott on site. Um, not was it just uh, give us a bigger runway to see what happens with spot price, but also having support of the likes of Rick Rule in the open market to uh, the wisdom of Peter Groskopf, uh Peter and Rick uh, were very crucial to life because Strathmore began way back when, and, and certainly Peter was head of banking that led us split out. So we're very, and not just them lending us the money, it's who lends you the money. This is very smart money, very intelligent money, who have all sorts of arms to help you move forward in your corporate plans. Well, speaking of smart money as well, the issue of sustainability has definitely been on our on our readers' minds. So, for instance, President Trump, of course, with his nuclear uh, work fuel group, of course, announced that they were going to redirect $150 million in, over the next 10 years for buying U.S.-based uranium. Can you tell me how that might impact Vision Uranium? Because, of course, you're Canadian-based. Well, first of all, they're talking about it. That's number one to me. And they're... You know, people are waking up like the Michael Moore documentary should wake everybody up. There is no green alternative. There's no green deals. It's called biomass. We burn down trees. Watch it. It's very important. So I, I think it's just a, it's a reality check. Uh, sort of living in a little bubble that we're wind and sun's going to do it. It's part of it, but a very small part of it. If people want to turn on their power, they need uranium, be sustainable, and they need to be able to turn it on and off. It's the best base load power in, by far. It's clean, no carbon footprint. And, and that's what people are saying. But people shouldn't be fooled by these green energy deals. They're just really cutting down trees. And of course, you are based, uh, your, your primary project is based in Saskatchewan, which is one of the best places in the world to have a mining project. Can you talk to us a little bit about one of the, some of the benefits that Fission Uranium, because we're going after a new investment audience for you, Dev, uh, you know, not the already standard guys that are already in the industry. Yeah, you can't you can't put a price on jurisdiction. Just ask some people who've had their minds taken away, like in BC. I think it all started with Brad Wall, and uh, he's a fantastic person as well. He really welcomed and and he put in rules in place. Now that's important, but also you have to remember uranium. Um, all of the Canada's uranium comes from one spot, which is the Athabasca, and so they've got sixty years of mining experience, and the government. Chemical used to be part of the government, so there's lots of rules and stuff in place, and they they want jobs, they want the industry, so they work with you. Um, they used to do crazy things like five, ten years ago, take companies from here, you had to pay your own way, they take you to China, all do tours. So Saskatchewan's always been proactive, and how do we help these young companies attract capital so they can spend in their province? So you can't say enough about it, and I think people have learned what happens when you don't aren't in the right jurisdiction. Well, as a CEO of a uranium company, can you tell me how you're managing COVID-19 presently? 
Well, obviously, we are not letting people come to the office. It's We make sure they stay at home, or if they do come in, it's just to pick up things. So we limited the interaction. Uh, we've certainly uh, been careful on the field. We are trying to, we're helping along with another partner, Denison. We are uh, as an initiative to get more masks and equipment out to those communities that we work in. So uh, uranium, we realize that, and, and that's a big issue. The northern people come into work in these camps, but then they go back into small, very small communities where they don't have medical. So that's another reason you'll be very careful when they bring Cigar Lake back on. It's the fact that they go back to communities where they don't have good uh, medical facilities if something does happen. Have you started putting your plan of action together for, say, the next quarter or two, or are you still waiting for more news? Well, I, I think it's it's we have got ideas, but again, every day, you know, if we get another outbreak in Saskatchewan, they may slow it down again. Uh, most everybody has stopped their feasibility work and, and involving a lot of people. So um, we have to wait, but we're ready. You know, we've been talking about what do we do this summer? What can we do? Uh, and again, that's a function also of, you know, um, it's how much money is out there. And, you know, we're starting to see what we saw this morning, um, another 30 million U.S. partly debt and from Warren Gilman's group uh, to NextGen. So you're starting to see money in the space. Um, so as we see more money coming into this space, you know, it'll certainly give us, us more capital, more options for money and get some work done. So unfortunately, you are kind of waiting on the government and you're waiting on the spot price. Well, Deb, as usual, an excellent update. Thank you so much for this. And we'll check in on you, say, in a couple of weeks. Happy to talk anytime. It's pretty easy these days. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.